you look at and if 40k had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back <laughs> this is the fucking guy full grip would take you out on a dinner date and whisper sweet sweet words in your ears like you have beautiful hair i will never let you go kill your siblings and you'll bloody do it because he's so freaking perfect How's it going folks? Welcome to the Chill Zone and if you're new to the channel, welcome back to the Chill Zone. I'm Jack and today I'll be checking out a video from Bricky on every Space Marine Legions in a nutshell. So I should say that it's been um, 84 years since I had asked Bricky if I could react to a couple of his previous videos on the Warhammer universe, which are amazing ones. And while there are of course other content that like got me engrossed into the hobby, for example the if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device series by Alpha Boozer. Brother Santotis, the mechanized body has not hampered him in the slightest. In fact, it has better served him than any one of our organic forms ever could. Oh, I want to be like him when I get fucking murdered. Those were definitely great entries into understanding what the Warhammer universe is about. Well, at least for the faction. So for those of you who have been asking me about how to get into Warhammer 40k, I highly recommend that you go and check out those videos. With that said, let us not tarry too much and let's jump straight into it. People on the internet. <laughs> The time has come. The reckoning begins. Bro. Your boy got himself a shaker. Wait. Did you say shaker or shaker? After many, many months of shilling gamer stuff like mad, my <laughs> favorite thing to do, we have ourselves. They seem to be very generous nowadays with uh, many people. It's nice. It's nice to see that. Supporting creators. The gal on here. If, it, if it's not great at focusing, I'm sure there'll be a thing in the background. <laughs> Put a thing in the background. Oh, wow. An adepta? Abs, obviously. Is that a sister? Hit it. Legally distinct mark on the face? Of course. Tomboy supremacy right here. I may or may not have a thing for muscular women. Legally distinct? I think so. The Bricky Shaker Cup is available now. And you should get it while it is hot. But if you're thinking, Bricky, what should I put <laughs> in this? Well, how about my top 10 favorite gamer sub Guacamole so Gamma Thoughts. one to number 10. All of them incredible, but listed regardless. And an addendum for those that are caffeine free. This Shaker yeah. Cup is available now in the description of BC this video. You may use code Bricky as well at checkout to get a discount on your order i'm gonna take one more sip for the camera slow it down throw some sexy music in there <laughs> and i'll see you guys soon sorry about that oh that's a bit too erotic there bricky with the jazz music in the background Everybody, my name is Berkey, currently stuck in the walls of the most prodigious school in the Imperium. Yeah, sounds about right. Falling asleep during class. God bless the skull of Virginium. Many of you have come across my Every Faction Explained video. Firstly, yeah. thank you. Secondly, we are here to dig a little deeper. Space Marines are the quintessential poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. Yep, the but promotional they material. Think they think Space Marines, but... There are many types of space walking death ridges from 20 separate <laughs> legions. We are going to rattle them off in order and give you a quick rundown of each one. A disclaimer, like in my every faction explained video, this is a mix of accuracy and memes. If I say <laughs> the Salamander's Legion specializes in hugging children and petting puppies, they are uh, exactly doing that. Mostly. Uh, I don't but no but do not boop the snoot <laughs> they care about civilians and are a bit kinder than the average space marine a space marine being a genetically modified super soldier that's had a million new and terrifying organs shoved into them 19 strapped to and some and are so depending on the, the average human that they are referred to as demigods in space. yeah Each space that they are as a father unlike you a <laughs> which is basically an even bigger it's funny because my dad's dead I mean, it's 40k, it's the green darkness of 40,000, so you gotta get in something dark once in a while. Both the leader and now the martyr of humanity. The Primarchs are his 20 sons, built in a lab who lead 20 legions of space marines, who are their sons. Not from a lab, but rather a dissection table, giving them the powers and skills of their associated <laughs> Primark via a gene. Yeah, if they survive. A special organ carrying the genetic makeup of their Primark. 
And, Ooh, you know, what's that odd with so Jagatai Khan Rubute. the Scars has the genetic makeup that wants him to go really, really fast, then his sons, the Space Marines, also, also want to go really, really fast. Yeah. I should note that I am only referring to the Legions this time around. If you're interested in sub-factions like Oof. the Black Templars, then it's not going to be here. However, I do have a excellent Black Templar video. I'd argue it's probably the most accurate one I can think of. It goes through the whole lore, everything about them. It's a very long video. Video. I'll put it in the description. Just look up Black Templar video in the description. Is there anybody who has truly gone through a detailed, like engaged himself in making a fully concise breakdown of the different successor chapters and such? Because that's a massive undertaking. One that is of course carried with a lot of presumptions for there are so many chapters that don't even know where they come from. They don't know who their dad is. But yeah, that, that would be that would be huge. You'll get what you need. And now with the easy explanation out of the way, let us begin with our first Legion. <laughs> I'm wearing the green now. Perfect. It's perfect. Legions? Loyal. Asmodai. No, 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 no. What am I talking about? He is the Grand Enigma. The estranged brother. Cypher, yeah. <laughs> Crossing his hand, laughing in the back, doing the move from uh, Black Panther. I'll never tell. <laughs> Nl L. Johnson, a duelist, a knight, a real <laughs> asshole, I'm not gonna lie. Oh uh, yeah, that he is. Scripter? Paranoid. The Dark Angels are our first legion, hailing from the death world known as Calabam. Their Primarch, Lion L. Johnson, is what happens when you try to make the side profile Chad meme into a genuine character. He is a master tier duelist, a brilliant strategist, and an overall dick. There are few situations True. He isn't for, and few fights he isn't ready to lead head on. This mm. makes the Dark Angels have a very Knights of the Round Table vibe. They look like very the Knights Christian. of old with these large suits, power armor, often donning robes and hoods. Their names also follow this. They have like Ezekiel, Azrael, Belial, Samuel, and so on. However, yeah. the common thing associated with Dark Angels are the Fallen, a part of their faction that turned traitor the against Fallen the Angels. Imperium, and they are very heavily trying <laughs> to expunge all knowledge of them. Redact it all the way around. Fallen. Never heard of any fallen. Do you know about the fallen? We're going to take you away and mind probe you to make sure you have never heard of the fallen. They definitely don't exist. And if they do exist, which they don't, we will find them even though they don't exist. They love their interrogation. It's so awesome because like you, you have this faction within 40k that's called the Inquisition, right? It's a meme that you may have come across sometimes like when you say something that is heretical the inquisition would like to know your location but like imagine the inquisition working alongside the dark angels oh my god it's freaking brutal to think that they're engaged in. and i love that picture right there for an ultramarine yeah that would be a nightmare they thrive in it lionel johnson is a scorched earth policy sometimes and it's given to his sons in force which makes sense considering that when the lion heard of a chaos primark on a home world different Primark, whose mom was there, he was like, I made Let's it. nuke it. The Dark Angels <laughs> are a special group where they formulate themselves into three different factions the Deathwing Terminators, slow moving, tough babies, yeah. the Raven Wing, fast jet bikes and flyers, and the Green Wing, which is your standard Marines. They mm. are a jack of all trades, but not in the sense where they're good at everything, but rather they have a lot of things that are good at specific things. Like instead yeah. of 20 people that have a multi tool, they instead have 20 people. With gigantic nice. power tools for every job imaginable. If you like being suspicious about everyone and everything in your surroundings, but you also like to have a whole lot of deep night type lore, run the Dark Angels. The One Piece! The One Piece is <laughs> Our second Legion is a special one. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing about this because uh, recording this right after the death of uh, Liz and <laughs> to the, the rumor says that her last words were the one piece is real so you you make out of it whatever you want if you can see you know, oh mm. to yeah we're not touching those Emperor's children allegiance traitor better Primark i understand Fulgrim. A perfectionist, an artist, a sneaky, 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 a single word descriptor. Beautiful. Perfection. 
The Emperor's children are all about the pursuit of perfection. Perfection in all they do. Perfection in war, in artistry, and perfection in every other aspect of life. Their armor yeah. is a gleaming pink, purple, and gold. Their ships have spires of gorgeous marble and gold statues in their honor. Fulgrim Jesus Christ. is a man who believes the pursuit of perfection is the goal of all things. And I mean, look at him. Can you truly he's tell perfect. he's not perfect? The hair, the features. As Primarchs <laughs> go, he is the one you look at. And if 40K had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back <laughs> this is the fucking guy fulgrim would take you out on a dinner date and whisper sweet sweet words in your ears like you have beautiful hair i will never let you go kill your siblings and you'll bloody do it because he's so freaking perfect it's crazy because i got to uh, start rereading the horus heresy since there is a uh, continuation now on uh, an event called the siege of terra that received like some rewrites it's all, it happens all the time, like kind of like a sort of retcon that you kind of get in comic books. But uh, in reading through uh, the uh, first few Horus Heresy books, you really get to feel for many of these characters as before they turn traitor. Like, oh, they are amazing. And Fulgrim is so bloody cool. Which is why this pursuit of decadence led them to the evils of chaos. Yes. Yeah. Emperor's children are our first chaos legion and not just a normal one. One devoted to, you guessed it, Slanesh. Slanesh. Prince of pleasure, god of unspeakable excess. The Emperor's the hamana, children hamana. in their pursuit god. are now horrifyingly mutated beings through Slanesh's great will. They torture and maim to feel perfection through pain. They screech and attack with sonic weaponry for perfection through sound oh, and it's they crazy. slaughter aiming for perfection in war. Fulgrim himself lost the battle against Slanesh as a demon sword yeah. corrupted his mind and transformed him into the sexy man he was, <laughs> into the sexy snake he is now. A demon Primarch corrupted and bringing his legion's will by himself. We do have the possibility of getting a good Fulgrim back. For there is this theory, as long as you are willing to believe in the soul, uh, that uh, some of these entities, if they've not been controlled or deleted by the Emperor or other forces, like for example Horus, uh, there's a possibility of uh, cloning them and reinserting the souls into their bodies. Like for example, a dude called Fabulous Bile, who uh, perhaps may be mentioned here very soon, uh, did make a clone of Fulgrim. A glorious one who retained his, uh, not sanity, but wasn't tainted by chaos. As far as Emperor's children go, they are some bad people. They do horrible, horrible things to anyone and everything. In fact, yeah. they're such trolls that their battle cry is for the Emperor, <laughs> despite being horribly mutated and True. corrupted. If you've ever taken a little too much of a drug, or, <laughs> or gummies. the music at a concert was too loud and you didn't bring any earplugs, or whatever the reason, you just take all those things and you dial it, and you dial it, and you twist it, and the knob breaks, Whoa. and that is the Emperor's children. God is dead. God, we need dead. And we he did the meme. He the did the meme. Warriors. Allegiance? Trade God is Primark? dead. Oh, Virtual God is cringe. A warlord, a siege smith. Saint Peter Turbo. Siege. Continuing the trend of our Chaos Legions, we have the Iron Warriors led by Primarch Percherabo of Olympia. To understand the Iron Warriors, though, one must first understand Percherabo. A man, a man who is such a chad. Damn. I let him continue. So bitter, coffee beans run for light. A man who hates the world and everyone in it, who never got recognition for his deeds, who hates his brothers and hates their accomplishments even more. Magnus, so a bit laughably petty, so incredibly bitter that he goes full circle to becoming likable. Why? Because he's a fucking he's good at what he does. Heresy. We didn't talk about the Horus Heresy. Intermission. <laughs> So Horus was the Emperor's favorite son, oh. right? You know, so the Emperor walked into his room. Horus said, Dad, Dad, I just gifted 150 subs to Amaranth. And she said my name is Hun. And she loved me for it. I really think that I might get to meet her one day. And it kind of played out something like this. No feelings for her <laughs> are not real. They're real to me. And then it started playing out a little bit more like this. <laughs> 
Come on, he didn't finish it. Okay, <clears throat> I'll do it for him. Let my simping be hers. I saw a custodian opportunity right there and I had to take it. So Iron Warriors, the Horus Heresy wouldn't have gotten shit done without Peter Turbo. Imagine an entire <laughs> faction that is the personification of brutal industrialism, where you serve the Legion until your dying breath. You build and you kill and you siege and you kill and you literally summon demons just to take them and trap them in machines and use them as cannon fodder. Mm -hmm. This is a thing they do. They summon demons to trap and use as shock troops. The Iron Warriors are siege warfare and oh, they are freaking weapons. dope. They are tanks, they are turrets, and they don't die. They hate Imperials, they hate Imperial Fists. Do you need a pacifier, <laughs> Iron Baby? Yes! No, I don't! They are bitter incarnate. It gets Picture better. The Iron Warriors don't serve the Chaos Guards because they like them. They serve them because fuck you. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go. Not another speeding ticket. Listen. Oh. So th there was a moment during the Horus Heresy that was just freaking perfect. Okay, so you remember this aforementioned Siege of Terror, right? <laughs> In there, he was basically, as Bricky mentioned, like the, the pillar behind it. He was the one, the foundation that held things together because his strategies are freaking perfect. Rip and tear until it is done. There came this moment where all the other traitor legions were kind of doing their thing, going after their own targets, and dude was like, I am wasting my time on this bullshit. And basically did the, the this is beneath me and left. He freaking left. It's like that scene in uh, like uh, Avengers Infinity Wars where Scarlet Wish is fighting against Thanos. Uh, no, was it in Endgame? It's in bloody Endgame. Sorry, confused that one. But in Endgame where she's fighting against Thanos and she's like rambling about how he took everything away from her. <laughs> and Birdie will be like, I don't even know who you are. I'll fight it in court, but I don't think they're going to accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. <laughs> the White Scars. Allegiance, Loyalist. Primark? Jagatai Khan, a speed demon, a plane strider, a roast god. Single oh, that's sister, true. Speed. Hailing from Chagos. Oh, how we handle Moltarian. about speed. They love melee, but they love it even more when they are doing it from a motorcycle or land speeder. Or honestly, just running really damn fast. The White Scars are honestly forgotten about a lot. And that's lore They're accurate. They're freaking They're humble. They're a legion that doesn't seek the recognition or glory from the combat they engage in. They engage in it because it is their duty and because they love it. Not mm -hmm. in the insane slaughter enjoyment of loving it, but in the thrill of the fight. They are known as the laughing killers because <laughs> they ride into battle with a smile on their face and a chuckle in their throat. And as you can God tell- Goddamn Mongolians. Them, they are Mongolian based. <laughs> horses and replace them with motorcycles and land spears and that's your style they're heavily based on the old times of genghis khan and consider this is 40k and everybody's evil you know that fits the white scars are actually <laughs> physical scars on their body going back to their heritage on chagoras yeah. the khan himself is kind of a dickhead but but a reasonable one. Good tradition he's right he's intelligent he's patient he is often underestimated because he doesn't scream his accomplishments from the no rooms, not like the ross him and the white scars dangerous his skills are kept at bay only to be truly shown when the time is needed the white scars are a forgotten legion often but that doesn't diminish their accomplishments all it does is surprise those who underestimate them speed cool. awesome mongolian vibe they got going on and if you really like to stab people that's the white scars for you let's thirst break <laughs> Okay, perfect, perfect transition. Just to praise the Khan just for a little bit. Um, I did shameless plug here on my own uh, side. Uh, make a tier list on uh, the different Primarchs some uh, month ago. And in there, I uh, stated that I didn't know much about the Khan. Now, I have uh, an Israeli friend who uh, recommended me some time ago, which I somewhat got like... A reminder of uh, to read some of the conversations that um, the Primark had with one another. And there is this one that is just perfect between the Khan and another one of his brothers that we mentioned a bit later called the Mortarian. 
And Mortarion hails from a planet from which he has basically taken the air off because he wants to remember the place or some weird shit. But the air of the planet is equivalent to copium. So <laughs> he literally sniffs copium every day. But I'll be damned if the Khan didn't roast this guy so hard that he ran out of copium to consume. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, bitch. <laughs> the Space Wolves. Allegiance, Loyalist. Primarch, Lehman Russ. A Viking, Savage, The Undertaker. <laughs> Single word descriptor. Wolf, 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 Bane. wolf, units. Skater, how many units in the Space Wolves Codex have the word wolf in their name? Up. <laughs> the Space Wolves are the Sixth Legion and hail from Fenris, a frozen wasteland of a world with their Primarch, Lehman Russ. I don't yeah. really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Space Wolves the because father. it's very obvious who they are. They are the second most like obvious what their shtick is legion in the 20 <laughs> legions besides the world eaters well, when you look at the space wolves behind what do you see do you see vikings in space you've yep. done it congratulations you have found vikings in space but they have as much in common with a regular marine as an old day viking with, with like a roman soldier you see as a space marine your body is so enhanced that you filter out poison and so you can't get drunk the space wolves distill a special mead out of a horrible poisonous plant that would, that would kill, kill a man so they could get drunk they have fangs in their mouths they sometimes cannibalize their enemies yeah, yeah they, sometimes they eat people because they gain knowledge about them from there and about battle plans but isn't that a trait that all astartes have like i know that from the progenos the uh, progenoid gland they can uh, create all the different all the things but i think that that feature is like amongst all the amongst the 19 different organs that they get all of them but perhaps it's more like attuned to the space wolves but i, I think that it's, it's something that they all have the possibility of doing space wolves are savages they're raiders they're vikings but despite all of this they are loyal to their core lehman russ is an egotistical guy who just shouts stories and tales <laughs> of his accomplishments everywhere they can until he gets time, knocked the fuck out so damn loyal that instead of gunning down his foes he hit him with a fucking backbreaker <laughs> to show his devotion his devotion to wrestling. If you want Vikings in space, you found it. Play the Vikings in space. We're gonna build the wall. We have no choice. We have uh, no choice. That's build just perfect. That build, build that, that wall. wall. This is one of the few instances where I highly agree with the usage of the Trumpador statement. He's a source of memes that is just great and he fits perfectly. The Imperial Fists. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primark? Rogel Dorn, a builder, a phalanx, a and he wall. needs a hand. Single word descriptor, uh. fortify. The Imperial Fists are led by Primarch Rogel Dorn in their homeworld of Inuit. However, they themselves are actually a fleet-based chapter, with their main source of recruitment coming from an enormous so fucking German. ship called the Phalanx. The Fists are a chapter you think of when you think of duty. They love to serve. The love to serve and the inability to be moved. Rogel Dorn is an architect a master builder, and basically a rock in brain and body. A lack of humor or ability to yep. lie shows German. that he is as blunt as the weapons of the I know so much about the lying parts, but the yeah. He makes, but like blunt, strong weapons. The fists are the same. Take your archetypical American Marine style look, a buzz <laughs> cut, a hard sense of duty, and then throw in some power armor and a love for building defenses, and you have the Imperial Ooh. Fists. They are amazing maneuver. When you find a spot, they're ready to defend you. You can't breach them. Their knowledge of defensive warfare is paramount. Without them, the Horus Heresy would have been so much more effective. But thanks to their insane and immovable tenacity, the Imperium lives today. And let's not forget that Iron Warrior and Imperial Fist rivalry. Want to know why the Iron Warriors are so bitter? These guys are the reason why. Whoa. Guys, break the thing. <laughs> Where is he going? It's like that Monty Python thing. Your mother was a hamster. I spit in your general direction. <laughs> Smelled of elderberries. Hey! Hey, that could have killed me! Hey, guys! <laughs> we missed! Get another! Dorn is her 
Chirabo are basically two sides of the same coin. Very good. We're just a bit more level headed and got better jobs. If you want to be defensive, <laughs> to be good at everything space marines are good at, bolters, heavy weapons, vehicles, and so you loyal. Want a classic military fighting force, start fisting. I am having a very bad day. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. The gangsters from London. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. The Night Lords. Oh yeah, is this his favorite? Primarch Conrad Kurz, a mm. sadist, a vigilante, the a jihadi. Espresso. Single word, fear. The Night Lords are my favorite legion, hailing from the Stromo and their Primarch Conrad Kurz. They are a traitor legion from a planet known as the Sunless World or the World of Endless Night. The Stromo is a horrible hive city that is known for being host to some- Shut the fuck up, Anya. This is no- No Kremonta. Ain't my Yeti looking ass. Yeah, Necromunda on the Hive uh, is the name of that game. For the worst gang violence, murder, and working conditions around. The only thing keeping the population in check is the suicide rate. The Night Lords <sighs> followed in the footsteps of their Primarch, a man who believed in a twisted oh. sense of justice and that the only way to make humans compliant is through fear. Fear. The Legion Batman. has been lost on them as their ranks were repopulated by gang members, murderers, arsonists, torturers, and other words I can't say on YouTube as young as 12 years old. Aren't there successor chapters that hail from the uh, uh, loyalist successor chapters, I should specify, that hail from the Night Lords? I think there are a couple that I should know of, but... If any of you uh, know of them, uh, Warhammer veterans, please let me know in the comment section below. Murderers before they were even teenagers raised to become demigods. Now fear is what they sow and flesh is what they reap. The Night Lords are scum. They are the exact opposite of all other legions. They torture and they maim and they flay because yeah. they think it's Fun. They run away often so they can come back and kill you with more numbers. They prey on the innocent and That's the weak. so nasty. They kill normal civilians because I fucking the hate them. And flee any battle where they don't possess overwhelming odds. They are the antithesis of normal space marines. Yeah. They are scum. One time, a world did not comply to their demands, so they raided one of their ships and mm. brought it into atmosphere. The crowds cheered and clapped as it appears that they had won the battle and the oh. airlocks opened and the skinned and flayed bodies of the crew were thrown down in the populace oh. in other words a legion of gangers and criminals add together a heavy slavic influence to them <laughs> you've got my favorite faction you have not done the dishes for five oh my favorite so this one is my favorite blood angels Fucking awesome, man. The Blood Angels. Vampires in space. Oil. Primark Sanguinius. An angel, a vampire, a dead ass motherfucker. <laughs> Single word descriptor Blood. The Blood Angels are Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primark Sanguinius. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale, with one of the best Primarchs, yeah. one beloved by almost the best everybody. Boy. A genuine angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the Sanguinius hands of lives. the greater Horus before the Emperor's eyes. The death of their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness, as their gene seed malfunctioned and created something known as the Black Rage. The Blood mm -hmm. Angels degrade over time, experiencing something called the Red Thirst, which gives them a genuine vampiric thirst for blood. As their yeah. minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't see it as that. They see themselves fucking heroes protecting their dad. Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. That space marine over there, that chaos space marine, that's Horus. Kill him. That orc war boss over there, <laughs> Horus. Kill him. That Tyranid swarm, 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Right. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? 
Horus sabotaged the toaster. <laughs> Destroyed the toaster? <laughs> Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This slow debilitating <laughs> disease True. takes over the blood angels and it gives them this angelic vampire. Some can overcome it. Inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use psychic powers to sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. I have to quickly go over to get me books. There is this one here called, uh, whoa, does it focus? Darkness in the Blood, where the one in red here called Mephiston. Absolute badass. He is one of the few instances of individuals who have overcome the rage and the thirst, but they don't exactly come off unscathed when they do that. The Iron Hands. <laughs> Allegiance, Loyalist. Primarch, Ferris Manus. Head, an gone. And not a great head on his shoulders. <laughs> Single word, oh. Bionics. Bionic! Oh! <laughs> the Iron Hands are from the home planet of Medusa. Bionic, and their Bionic or Commando. Ferris <laughs> Does Ferris Manus have an iron hand? Oh, Bionic Commando. Okay, no, he's got an iron hand. The iron hands believe that the flesh is weakness. But despite all of their enhancements, despite all the things that made them demigods, replacing some of the flesh with bionics will allow them to serve the emperor more. They go harm into vehicles and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts being giant walking sarcophagi that have <sighs> wounded space marines piloting them from the inside. Vehicles, metal upgrades. These are the things that make up this legion. Their tech marines have servo arms sticking out from all directions. They have a wide array of mechanics and Sheesh. extremely often replace limbs with metal ones, serving all kinds of different functions to deal with their enemies. The I think that's like a uh, uh, running memes about these guys cutting off their limbs and repairing them, uh, replacing them with uh, mechanical ones just to kind of please their dad. But their dad really hates them. Like he mistreats it. It's, it's a running thing amongst the Primarchs, especially the traitor legions. They, they really did not treat the kids well. Well, perhaps besides Horus, he started pretty good until he went back. Their hands are also not particularly nice. Uh, they're kind of assholes. I mean, Marines are already normally pretty big assholes, but, but they, they're a little bit up there because of their ugh, flesh, ugh, civilians. But also they because of how their dad treats them. See, the flesh is weak. Then of flesh course they're going to push Bionics. that onto the others. The strength of the machine is pure and cannot so easily be corrupted. So if you want people who have this little techno fetishistic vibe to them that love their vehicles and their walking coffins, hit up the Iron Hands. You understand, Commander? I was never here. Legion 11. We don't talk about that either. Everything is redacted. Oh, hello there. I have returned <laughs> from um, touching grass. <laughs> I'm pretty cool with the grass. <laughs> now let's continue our Warhammer lecture. This ruffles my jammies. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so what's going on here? I am a the book club. That is, of course, if the book club were the Doom books, which have literal to nothing to do with the Doom guy, which will make you mad. The World Eaters. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Angron. A butcher, a slaughterer. Like extremely, earth-shatteringly, unreasonably fuck-ass mad. Single word descriptor, anger. Hey you, <laughs> yeah you, are you mad? Do you just fucking hate everything? Do you want to murder everything in sight and get rewarded for doing so? Then you should join the World Eaters. <laughs> Home planet of Nuceria and Primarch Angron, who if the name didn't suggest, is real fucking angry. Angron was raised a slave, forced to fight Poor in guy. gladiator pits. When he refused, they shoved old world tech into his brain so that if he ever felt any emotion other than anger, it caused him die. extreme pain. All his sons, wanting to be like their dad, also Did the put a same version thing. of these nails in their brain. So now you have an entire legion who literally feel 
unimaginable pain if they are feeling any emotion other than anger slap them with a freight train of armor two goddamn chainsaw axes <sighs> and you can see what's gonna happen it's Idiots. no wonder they're corrupted by corn they're honestly a surprisingly sad legion that i actually screwed up in assuming that they were all just angry murderers no <laughs> But they didn't start out that way. Their corn corruption degraded their intelligence, their free will, and made powerful warriors into arguably even more powerful warriors. But, but ones at like what cost? At the mouth, psycho warriors. They're like the rabid leaders, dogs. Like I mentioned the space wolves. They, they wear their concept on their sleeve. They are angry. They want to kill things. They want to kill you and maybe some of their friends. And that's that's the faction and it's kind of iconic uh iconic Bruh. ironic because there is a banter i believe once between uh some world eaters describing the space wolves as they like make fun of them saying that they aren't wolves they're dogs who just follow every single command but they themselves are running around like rabid dogs that's the scary part of it, and it's it's super sad, man. I feel very bad for them, but at the same time, also, fuck them. <laughs> they're red, they're mad, they're gonna run at you and cause death. If you like that, you play the world eaters. Or you like it because they were, you know, at one point, a lot better than that. Most of yeah. Warhammer was a lot better than that. I was once a lot better than that. That was when I was in college. <laughs> I didn't finish college, and neither did Angron. The Ultramarines, Allegiance, Loyalists, Primarch, Rabute Gilliman, that's Roblox that's Gigabyte, that Analyst, a Diplomat, a Blueberry Boy Scout, single word descriptor, Captain America. Duty. When you see Space Marines on a box or just Space Marines in promotional material, notice how they are always colored blue. These are the Blue Space Marines, the, these ones here, the Ultramarines, who hail from the world of Macrog with their Primarch Robute Gorilla Man. Ultramarines <laughs> are, are the white bread of Space Marines, the, the grilled chicken with salt and pepper. And this is by no means an insult. They are plain Jane, but that's also because they are so goddamn good at their job. Yeah. Their skill for warfare is paramount, but so is their ability for leadership. Gilliman for a while was a damn boring Primarch for all the reasons he was great. Because Until he no got revived. You don't win a war without logistics, without supply lines, without uh. trade routes, without infrastructure and economy. You don't win anything without all that stuff, and Gilliman knows it. Which is why he has one of the largest dude, he his empires in the Imperial sword in the front. Ultramar. Which is why his sons are the most recognizable of all the space marines. Which is why the only thing that rivals the weight of their victories is the weight of their egos. <laughs> they are good at everything and bad at nothing. They are great at everything. Other legions can do other things better than them, but they are good at everything. The most interesting... I don't know if... Uh, was that Monty Python that he played in the intermission? for uh these the ultramarines but it made me think of that one clip with uh i think it's julius caesar right or whomever he was that goes like because because, because that i think that that is what's going on in some of the ultramarine heads sometime like we got big dick energy here we can handle everything so don't come and talk trash to us thing about the ultramarines is their characters as they are all now inflicted with various amounts of ultra depression for yeah. many reasons gilliman is at the time of recording the only playable primark currently on the tabletop and the only one that has returned to the 41st millennium for the loyalist side he mm. took one look at what his empire has become and immediately wanted Super to fucking depressed. being forced to lead everything he once hated an imperium uh. rocked into its core with his sole responsibility to save it this kind of I to pain Gilliman. They are a perfectly standard that's so true with perfectly standard ideals and great if you want a simple clean slate uh oh stinky <laughs> funny poop. there we go poop funny Woo. the death guard allegiance Heretic, Lord Copium, Mortarian, a Reaper, a Poison, an ungodly stench. Single Oof. word descriptor? Stink. Rot. The Death Guard hailed from <laughs> Barbaros with the Primarch Mortarium. The 14th Legion were known for their incredible resilience to damage. Gee. That's a lot of damage. Where the Imperial Fists were defensive thanks to tactics and posturing, the Death Guard were resilient because they could take a punch or, or a gut shot or, or a cannon to the chest and, and just keep on moving. They are slow, yet they are resistant, which was only confounded oh. as a Death Guard captain, Typhus, 
code name Dickhead sold them out to Nurgle, <laughs> god of rot and decay. Now, the Death Guard are a Nurgle worshipping infected legion whose ability to feel pain and take damage has all but just gone away. They yeah. really gunfire, able to kill normal marines 10 times over and continue it's on so the disgusting. Farm, all while spreading rot and disease in the name of their dark, very stinky master. Where the Death Guard enter, plague Ugh. spreads. People get sick and they die. They spread debilitating disease to all around them why would a legion need to be anything more than very tanky i mean when even the emperor's children who have been incredibly malformed to the, the or deformed should i say to their transformation because of well them giving allegiance to slanesh will look at them and be like ew you know you don't goofed when their enemies are falling over, puking, firing out of both ends, and having their skin peel off just by their presence. Entire worlds infested with a zombie rot, swarms of insects that eat flesh and metal alike, all while the Legion advances slowly, <laughs> painfully, allowing the disease they spread to take its toll before they reap the lives they believe belong to them. And look at Mortarian's model, dude. The man is baller as fuck. A gigantic moth with a this gigantic dripped out. Come on now. <laughs> the Death Guard. For my next trick! Oh, the nerds. They are also pretty cool. For what remains of them. <laughs> sons. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Magnus the Red. A scholar. A sorcerer. A fucking nerd. Mm -hmm. A single word descriptor? Magic. The Thousand Sons hail from their homeworld of Prospero, with their Primarch Magnus Egypt. the Red. <laughs> the final of our four major Chaos God factions, the Thousand Sons are disciples of Zeech, the Changer of Ways. Heavily inspired by their Egyptian theming, the Legion themselves are slaves to the god of trickery and change, most of them no longer even having a physical form, reduced to just dust piloting suits of armor at the whim of a sorcerer leader the thousand <laughs> sons do not deserve their fate there's a common joke that magnus did nothing wrong but he did this is untrue he has done much wrong however he is he very just sympathetic, like him mainly because the space wolves and lehman russ sought to end their rivalry through the annihilation of their legion escaping only through the assistance of the changer of way and forever changed because of it meanwhile magic is their main tool take some lovecraftian style ability the eyes everywhere and potent spells to be cast at their foes whether these are bolts of psychic lightning reversing time itself opening up portals to unreality or changing the very fabric of the universe the thousand sun sorcery knows no bounds and they are very good at it yeah. if you're a fan of like wizards your classic style of spell caster and you want a ton of them combined with a tragic and if you like sands in your boots who, like mortarian looks fucking baller and the thousand mm -hmm. suns are for you you fucking asshole there's no way you're a fucking cheater <laughs> sort of loser. you're a cheater my dad works at nintendo <laughs> <laughs> the Horus, or the Luna Wolves, or the Black Legion. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Horus, a warlord, a treasured friend, or the traitor himself. Single word descriptor, assault. <laughs> the Sons of Horus are the formal name of Horus's legion, hailing from the world of Chthonia. The Sons of Horus themselves too. were assault troops. The strength of their attack was some of the most powerful in the legions. While the White Scars may favor speed for their strikes, the Sons of Horus were known for their overall offensive power. It was even said that if the Sons of Horus met the Imperial Fists, they would be at a stalemate for eternity. However, <laughs> the Sons of Horus are no longer because, well... The Black Legion. <laughs> they are now instead the Black Legion. Fuck this guy. The despoiler. You know what? I, I I had an opinion of this guy in, in the past when I just began to understand uh, what was going on with uh, 40k. I was thinking, like, since he had gone through his 13 legions and such, and he was being considered as a loser because he never really succeeded in any of them. Um, I agree now. I'm willing to keep on making jokes about Abby Abaddon. He's a dick. Like, man, the fact that so much has been stopped. If he wasn't so hellbent on wanting to hit things hard, 
Like there are other means. I know, I know we deal with power fantasy at all times, but there are other means. Who claims to succeed where his father failed. The Black Legion are still an offensive and assault based force, but they act much like the Ultramarines, but for chaos. Your standard black and brass space marine who are known for recruiting in all different kinds of avenues. Anyone can become a member of the Black Legion. Anyone can swear allegiance to the War Master. You gain favor by not just one, but all four gods equally. Their famous line, let the galaxy burn, burn. is the best way to describe them. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. So long as the Imperium dies, the Black Legion has done its job. They are a legion formed from hatred and spite with a clear goal in mind. As the Dark Gods are calling and the Black Legion are sure to answer. Hello. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I know that video. <laughs> the word bears. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Lorgar Aurelian. The altar boy. A fanatic, a choir boy. A single word descriptor, zeal. If the Black Legion answer the call of the Dark Gods, what if instead you decide to call the gods first? Mm -hmm. Well, then the word bearers are for you. The 17th Legion led by Primarch Lorgar on the planet of Colchis. <laughs> Originally obsessed with worshiping the Emperor of Mankind as a god, they found that despite his divinity, he was not worthy Erebus. of Erebus. Because... You know, he raised their equivalent of Jerusalem to the Fuck monarchy to worship him. <laughs> like, could you imagine if, if God actually showed up and was just like, Jerusalem is stupid. It just, it just destroyed the whole thing. Like, what would that do to your head? But hey guys, do you remember Gomorrah? <laughs> and will reward those who do. The word bearers are chaos worshippers to a T. All chaos gods. They specialize in demonic rituals, the summoning of demons, and the mutual possession of their own troops. They welcome demons to their bodies to fight as yeah. one. They exalt the dark gods themselves for Some demonic aid. symbiosis. They answer. In the world of 40k, Satan doesn't just call you back. He hops in his GT Mustang and he crashes on your couch. In the world of 40k, your rituals will end with genuine results. The word bearers know this. They know through sacrifices, through devotion, through dark baptism, the gods will answer and they will be rewarded. It's funny because so it's true. They bring forth demons. They bring forth possessions. They bring forth the power of the neverborn, the damned, and those that hide in the dark to bear against the Imperium. Lorgar sits there smiling as the truth he always knew, the existence of gods and the importance of faith is a reality. and It is a tool he is using to rend the galaxy. Dear Sir Stroke Madam, fire! Exclamation mark. The boy! Fire! Exclamation mark. <laughs> Help me! The Salamanders. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch, Vulcan. A forge master. A behemoth. A very huggy boy. Single word descriptor? <laughs> Fire. The Salamanders hail from Nocturne, a volcanic planet home to their Primarch Vulcan. They are the largest of the space marines, not just numbers, but rather size. Vulcan, it, it, he is an Fucking enormous big. slab of beef, by far the largest of all the Primarchs. However, don't let his size fool you, as he is also a big the heart. Kindest. Salamanders oh. have the juxtaposition of looking frightening, being larger than other marines, while also boasting an ashy, like coal color skin and blazing yeah. red eyes, while simultaneously carrying around all manner of flame weaponry. So your average civilian might be spooked, but in reality, they are by far the kindest <laughs> of all the legions to those civilians. Vulcan believes that to safeguard the Imperium is to, at the end of the day, I mean, safeguard its people. So unlike yeah. other legions who put their Careful lives he far and above the average human, the Salamanders spend significantly more time trying to save them, often taking numerous losses by doing so. They are very independent as well. They're forgers and blacksmiths, maintaining yeah. their own weapons and crafting versions of it. Yeah, They'll fuck the Imperium regulation. Of being able We're to gonna help people the best we can. After becoming a space marine they they care which is the funny part because the seven and a half foot tall giant with flaming red eyes who just reduced a traitor to bubble metal says you have nothing to fear young citizen take my hand if you enjoy fire melting things and being the nicer conflagration salamanders are for you 
if Angron went well. Yeah. Saga, sneak attacks don't work if you yell it out loud. The Raven Guard. Allegiance, Loyalist. Primark, Corvus, Horax. A Raven, a Shadow. An industrial dance. Birdman. Single word descriptor, Stealth. The Raven Guard are the <laughs> final Loyalist Legion at 19 and hail from the planet Deliverance with Primark, Corvus, Horax. If it hasn't been made clear enough already, the Raven Guard are stealth specialists and proficient in all manners of assassination. Despite this, their signature winged jump pack and double lightning claw look is, well, not stealthy not at all. Stealthy. <laughs> they are named after, of course, the Raven and embody the entire concept of it as a herald of death. They are stealthy, patient hunters that have no problem with waiting and waiting and waiting until the moment to strike is at hand. It's not easy being a stealth faction when your stealth involves people in one ton of power armor, but they mm -hmm. find a way. That more than anything it should not be used to show how ridiculous 40k is. But how impressive it is. Even though it is, but rather to show how good the Raven Guard are at their jobs. It's not about them sneaking around you without being seen, but it's also about them having lied in wait for so long that it wasn't uh, until they were surprised me to even realize they had been there. And also, if you want, you know, edgelord marines with a long black haircut, pale skin, ravens everywhere. If you want to topic marines and snipers abound, then the Raven Guard are for you. It could be in this very room. Uh, yeah. We can't trust anything that Bricky says right now because it's the Alpha Legion. It was obvious. The Alpha Legion. Allegiance? Heretic. So we think. <laughs> Primark, Alpharius, and Omegon. Saboteurs, destabilizers, they're in your walls. Single word descriptor, espionage. Finally, the 20th Legion, the Alpha Legion, led by <laughs> Alpharius and Omegon. The only Legion to have two Primarchs who were split as twins. The Alpha Legion are heretical. We think and specialize in destabilization of society and armies. Their entire shtick is the Hydra, because when you cut off one head, two more take its place. All of the Alpha Legion look exactly like their Primarch. Olive skin. Everybody is Alpharius. All claim to be Alpharius. All are liars. They make the largest use of sleeper cells and cultists in the Chaos Space Marine factions because it's extremely easy <laughs> to take over a planet when you poison our water supply, burn our crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses. Where the Raven Guard use stealth and sabotage to eliminate their enemies, the Alpha Legion prefer to weaken them over time with sleeper agents, yeah. impersonations, basically anything you could imagine from a hardcore spy movie or, or Cold War level espionage. Being Alpharius is not only only an honor. Being Alpharius is a requirement. There's a story of someone chasing down an Alpha Legion agent for years upon years, and when they finally catch up with them and they see them, they see that the agent is wearing the oh, same the face. Oh, the face. This was the plan all along. Yeah. To kill him. Take that identity. Spot. We're talking facial reconstruction surgery. We're talking hacking. We're talking political assassination and impersonation. Yeah, they're the everything. big fighter they're type. Space Marines but in name only. Because being a strong stoic warrior is not what the Alpha Legion is interested in. In fact, the Alpha Legion is interested in you not even knowing that the Alpha <laughs> Legion is a thing. I am Alpharius. You <laughs> Change my mind. We are all Alpharius in his Lord's glorious army. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I sucks hope cup. you learned a little something. I hope if you were on the fence about what Space Marines you wanted to field, you would now have a better idea of what you want. Blood to Angel's play. still my, my favorite. Up, Shaker. It's on sale. It's on pre-order. It's ready to go. Just get it. Just get it. Use code Bricky. It's in the description. Just get it. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon.com slash Bricky and the members on the YouTube channel. Your names are here. I thank you a ton. You are all very generous. And uh, oh, I need to answer a question. Have you ever attempted to touch grass but end up touching the Destiny 2 loading screen? <laughs> oh, damn it. I just... That's good. Terrific job on Bricky's part to setting all this together, and it was such such an enjoyable video. I I, I don't think that uh yeah well I I always love to react to things that I kind of know a little bit more about because it it makes it so much more entertaining and uh, yeah it just flows well. 
as always, guys. I really enjoyed this one and I hope that you did as well. Of course, if you are interested in knowing more 40k stuff, uh, I can highly recommend that you, for one, subscribe to Bricky's channel. And also he has a second channel called Adept is Ridiculous that has a podcast diving into some of... Uh, somewhat deeper but still kind of surface level stuff on warhammer 40k but i still recommend that you go and check that out it's freaking hilarious but that said though wish you all to have a wonderful evening see you guys in the next one bye My